If you want to become a good and successful Batman player, you need to work on a lot of different technical skills, but you also need to be smart tactically. Besides that, there are also a lot of physical abilities that are very important. You need to be fast on court, but for longer matches you also need fitness and endurance. Besides that, mobility and stability will help you to stay injury free and strength will help you to produce maximum power in your shots, but also with your footwork. So, so many aspects that you have to master, but how to put them together into one week of training. And also, if you're just starting out and maybe you're only training once or twice per week, what should you focus on? What are the most important things here? And also the other extreme. What should I do if I have training every day and how should I structure my week with that many sessions? And also the question, how could I add in some training off court, maybe at home? Or the big question, should I go running or cycling outside to improve my endurance? So these questions and many more I want to take on in that video. So let's see how to structure the perfect week of Batman training. So if you can only train once a week or maybe twice a week, I would suggest you to put a huge focus in your training on the development of technical and tactical skills. First of all, the foundation should be technical because you only can use tactics if you also have some technical options. But if you are already a little bit more experienced, a little bit advanced, then also focus more on tactical skills in the training. With only one or two sessions, I think it is also super important to maximize the time you have on court and already use the warm up as good as you can. And maybe the first practical important advice I can give you here is try to work on your footwork technique with your warm up. I already made a few follow along videos where I showed some footwork patterns that can already be done at home. But I think they are also a good way of starting your session on court or in the hall. So you're not only getting warm, but you're also using some badminton specific patterns and you repeat them over and over again. I think this here is the crucial aspect. We need a lot of repetitions to develop technical skills. And I hope you have two sessions because if you have only one training a week, the break between those two sessions is really long and it also um, slows down the learning process in terms of technical development. So if you have two sessions and if you can maybe spread them out throughout the week, maybe one session on Monday, the other one on Thursday or Friday, this will definitely help you to dramatically increase the learning curve. As I said, repetition is super important. So put in a lot of repetitions for your footwork technique in the beginning of the session. Afterwards, I would focus on racket skills. And here it depends also a little on the level you are on. If you're just starting out, start also with some basic technical exercises where you have a feeder who throws a shuttle or who's maybe feeding you shots and you try to work on a specific technique or a specific principle. So I know this can be a little bit boring, but I can assure you there you get a lot of repetitions where you can also really focus on changing something in your technique. If you started playing like this and you will just play matches on court, you will also use that technique because that will work in a match situation. But if you want to change to a better grip, a better starting position, you have to work on that under very easy circumstances. From there on, try to increase the difficulty of your exercises and also use flying shuttle if possible. So also some basic exercises like lob drop net or maybe one corner against two or three corners where you now have to move and hit the shuttle, but it's still a lot easier than in a real match situation. I already made a video with the progression of exercises, how you can go from basic exercises with feeding up to small games or matches where you then try to use that certain technique. So maybe have a look at that. And also if you're only training once or twice per week, I would still recommend you to play matches in the end of the session. Maybe not too long in the beginning, but still try to play matches. On one hand, it makes a lot of fun and it's probably the reason why you're actually uh, in a badminton training, you want to play badminton. But on the other hand, you're also realizing what maybe works and what maybe should be improved or where you should work on in the next few sessions. So it doesn't make sense to just stand on one spot and play the same shot over and over again from that position and to realize after months that you cannot do that or that it's just too far away from a match. So go on court, play some matches, have some fun, but also try to reflect where you're actually improving and where you need to put, on, put in some more work in the exercises before.
So for the next step, you don't even need more time on court. If you're motivated, if you want to improve faster, if you want to become a better player, um, we can now also focus more on the physical part of the game. Now, when we look at the physical skills, you can do a lot at home in terms of mobility, stability, strength and endurance. And if you're just starting out, I would recommend you to focus on mobility and stability for the most important joints, because that will prepare your body actually to develop strength, speed and endurance afterwards. And it will also help you to prevent injuries, even though you increase the volume of training and put in more sessions in the long term. So how could that look like? You could maybe put in one long session per week where you start with a lot of mobility exercises and then dive into some stability and strength exercises. I already made a few tutorials on that and I will link them all in the description below. So maybe that could be a session of 40 to 60 minutes you do once per week or you can also split it up to two a little bit so shorter sessions. So maybe two times 30 minutes and that will be a good foundation in the beginning to build on from there. So that basic training for mobility and stability can be done without any equipment or with just a few tools. And also if you're already experienced and want to really work on strength, um, just a few tools can help you to really develop strength at home. I also made a video where I gave you some advice for um, building up your own home gym for a very little budget. Another thing you can do beside those workouts is running or cycling outside, but that's something I would not overdo or maybe leave out completely because of two reasons. Reason number one, the endurance that you build with running or cycling is not exactly the endurance we need for playing badminton. It's a completely different thing to move fast on court with very high intensity intervals compared to that slow and steady running or cycling outside. Another disadvantage of running outside is that you will actually become slow if you do that too often. Your muscle fibers will adapt to that slow and steady movement and so it will be counterproductive for the explosive movements you need on court. So my suggestion, maybe put in one session running or cycling per week if you want, but also there, do not overdo it. And maybe most important, all these things I've just discussed should support your badminton. So this should be the main focus and you should always be 100% um, focused and rested when you get on court for your badminton sessions. So if you do a very intense bike ride before the session, um, yeah, maybe that will help your endurance a little bit more, but it will decrease the quality of your on-court training. And that should still be your main focus to have maximum quality in the training sessions you have on court. So if you have three sessions per week, I would recommend you to um, be a little bit more specific with the sessions. Um, a suggestion from me would be go a little bit more focused on speed on Monday. So you can start the session with some very short but super intense intervals and then also use some exercises on court where you have to move very fast. In the beginning of the week, the legs are still fresh and then you can work with maximum speed on court so to develop some speed and explosive strength on court. The session in the middle of the week can be a little bit more all around, so focus more on technical and tactical training, and play some matches in the end, and at the end of the week, focus more on really badminton specific endurance. So this can be the session where you really empty the tanks before the weekend. So for example, you can use some multi-shuttle feeding in the end, maybe also do that a little bit longer. It can be really tough and hard and Make sure you have enough regeneration time afterwards and make sure there's no tournament that weekend. Of course, if there's a tournament, leave out the hard endurance things. Maybe practice a little bit on court, but do not overdo it so you go fresh into your tournament. With the two free days, I would still keep in the mobility and stability workouts or the strength training if you're already more experienced in that area and maybe leave out that running or cycling first. If you feel good with it and if you enjoy just going for a run once a week, no problem, then you can put that in on another day. 
but make sure that there's a little break after or between the day where you have two sessions in one day. A fourth session doesn't change so much in my eyes. Still in the beginning of the week, focus more on speed. The more you go to the end of the week, focus more on endurance. And in between, always give yourself a rest. So try not to make every session super hard. When you have four training sessions on court per week, you already have to manage your energy levels a little bit. And also make sure that the other trainings you put around are not too hard. So once again, the level of the on-court training should be high. You should be fresh when you get on court and get the most out of them. If you have five on-court sessions per week, I would recommend you to use one day as a kind of regeneration day where the training on court is not that intense, where you maybe use a lot of um, exercises where you just stand or make one step to work on technical skills or play some tactical games that are not too hard. A good day for that could be Wednesday. So we have Monday, Tuesday, a little bit more intense sessions, Wednesday, kind of a rest day and Thursday and Friday. Once again, a little bit harder, especially Friday to finish off with a good endurance session. With that many sessions on court, it can also be an option to integrate the mobility and stability things to your on court session. So maybe in the end of the training, use 20 to 25 minutes for a little circuit training, or also use a little bit more time for the warm up to put in the mobility exercises that I was talking about before for the shoulder, for the hip, and so on. If you have enough time, of course, you can also make separate sessions. And once again, try to have enough time in between every training. So do not go right away from an intense circuit training on court. Give yourself a rest. So spread those sessions over a full day. I just mentioned it, but I want to emphasize it once again, especially if you're training every day or multiple times a day, you need to give your body the time to recover from all the stress you put on. And the time where you're resting is actually the time where you're getting better and where you're improving. So you could imagine it like that. The capacity of performing on court goes down during a session. So the longer and harder you train, the more you go down on that curve here. And now when you give your body the chance to regenerate, the curve goes up again. But it not only goes up until the point where you were before the session, but your body wants to be prepared when there is the next training. So the level of your performance or your capacity goes a little bit above the starting level. Now, if there's no more training from that point on, the level goes down again and the capacity will remain the same or in the long run will decrease. So now here you can see what happens if you train too often or if you put too much stress on your body without enough rest, you will actually um, train yourself downwards. You will get into a thing called overtraining that also in the long run can cause really serious injuries or serious illnesses. So be careful about that, give yourself enough rest and it is okay to feel very tired after a training session, but it's not normal that you feel tired every morning when you wake up and you already go um, very stressed into a week of training. So make sure you give your body enough chance to recover and use those peaks here to set the next training session when you are fresh, when you have full capacity, so you train yourself upwards. All right, long video. And I think we could talk about that topic for hours because there are so many different aspects that play an important role. Maybe you have still some questions, then please let me know them in the comments below so I can maybe help you with your specific case a little bit better. But I hope that framework helps you a little bit more to get a good structure in your weekly training and to get the most out of your training routines, out of the effort you put in on court, but also off court. Two more very important tips before you dive into your perfect training week. Number one, hit the like button and also to make my week perfect, hit the subscribe button if you're not already following. And then see you in the next video. Bye bye.